All right, so this is my next tutorial in my series of tutorials that I will be putting on my blog. And this one is again using the Mass Effects tools that 3ds Max offers us. And it will be ripping a flag as you can see here. It's very nice. It rips right about there. I'm just scrubbing through it. And then the wind dies down. It's a very simple process and the new Mass Effects tools in 2013 are very helpful in creating this. So let's get started then, shall we? Let's reset the scene. Uh, save my changes to my scene. Yes, I want to reset the scene. And now, after resets, let's start setting up the scene. So first, you'll notice I'm in 2013. This needs to be done in 2013 because we'll need to use the M cloth modifier as you can see right here. So let's start by setting up our units. First we will make sure we're using inches. I like using decimal inches as I have said before in my previous tutorial if you have watched it. And just click on US Standard Decimal Inches and that will be what we will use. Now we will set up the mental ray rendering. So go into render setup. Wait for it to open. Under assign render make sure NVIDIA mental ray is selected. That's just for some of the features we'll use in rendering. It's really not needed, but I like doing it personally. Alright, so now that is set up, we will set our timeline. And our animation will be about 250 frames in length. This will allow enough time for the wind and the forces to break apart the flag and rip it nicely. So now let's start modeling out our thing. First we will create a ground plane. So we'll create a plane have it set to zero, one link segment, one with segments, just right click on these to make sure they're set to one. And we will set our length to 1000 inches and our width to 1000 inches. And zero out the plane in the middle. Now, let's go and create the flight pole. So we'll create a cylinder. And there is our cylinder. And our cylinder will be let's say one and a half inches in radius and 10 feet or 120 inches in height there we go, we got a nice little 10 foot 10 foot flagpole there. Now next thing we will be create, let's rename this first, flagpole and next thing we will create is our flag so let's make a plane and I have found that length segment of 40 and width segments of 20 have worked well for me in the past and that is a horrible color. Let's change that to black. Make it much easier to see. And now let's put a gray material on this. This is just a quick little thing to do to make sure that you can easily see your wireframe. My mouse is flickering. I don't know why that is. Probably because of the recording software. And let's set this link segments to 40 and the width segments to 20. That will give us enough segments to make sure that we can use the M cloth modifier properly. Now let's set this up nicely so it can sit right in our flagpole. I'm going to go to the top viewport and the front viewport to set up properly. And make sure about two or three segments are in the flagpole. This will help for when we are creating the M cloth modifier and setting it up properly. Alright, let's pull this down to about here. And that's good enough. So, we will create the M class. So, we will go into our Mass Effects toolbar right here. You can easily get to it by clicking on an empty space here toolbar, hitting Mass Effects toolbar, or going Customize, Show UI, Show Floating Toolbars. And that will show this toolbar. Alright, that will bring up that. Now, let's set this to an M class material. Set select as M class, just click and hold on this and select a Zen cloth. and now let's play the simulation see what happens so as you can see it just kind of folds and bends and falls with it so we reset our animation to similar state and we will set this one to a static this is just for setting up our dynamics and this will help so our flag can actually hit into this area alright so let us set up our M cloth settings so what we're looking for is about a flag. So we 
don't really want it to bend or stretch too much. It's not a spandex flag, it's just a cotton, regular cotton flag. So we will set the behavior to dynamic. This allows it to always, as it says right there in the description, deform by simulation. And the kinematic cloth will allow for keyframe animation until frame. We looked over this in my previous tutorial, so I won't really go too much into this. Now let us load in a preset. They have a nice preset here for cotton. So you go under Physical Fabric Properties, Presets Load, and Cotton. We'll load it in, and it sets a nice preset for our gravity scale, our density, stretching, spendiness, damping friction, and our cloth parameters right there. Um, this is how much the world gravity scale will affect it. Density is, again, the density of our cloth, or our, yeah, our cloth and cloth. Stretchiness is how much it will stretch. Makes sense. Bending is how much it will bend on itself. Again, makes sense. These are very very uh, common terms, dampening, again how the time it takes to come back, and then friction, how much friction actually has when it hits ground or itself. So now that we have that set up, let's press play again. Let's see how that changes. And it's a bit slow, but you can see how it just kind of folds into itself. Alright, now let's go back. And let's set up it being connected to a flagpole, because usually flagpoles don't fall down like that. It just doesn't work that way. So, this is very easy to do. You open up your mcloth modifier, hit vertex, and now we go into the vertices we want to select. I select these three first rows that are penetrating into the static node of the, of the uh, flagpole that I've created. And I will go make group, and that group name, and we'll name that group, I will name it node group. So there we go, it is a node, and we will have a, we'll create a node, and this what does is you click on this, then you click on the next thing you want it to attach to. So I want to attach to the flagpole. And if we run the simulation again, you will know that, you notice that it just attaches itself to the flagpole now. There's absolutely no falling anymore, it's attached, and it works just like a flag should when there is no wind. However, I don't want just that. I want it to be windy. So as you can see, falls down, and that's it. So let us set up our wind in this. First, I will set up a wind that's just a very basic wind. So we'll go under Create, Space Warps, and Wind. And I will set the strength about that to 1. And the rotation I will set to... We'll go to E for rotation, hockey E, so we just have a rotation gizmo. And my X rotation will be negative 90, my Y will be 0, my Z will be negative 30. So it's pushing it in that direction. The placement of this rotation gizmo does not matter, however, the direction that this arrow is facing very much so does, as that is the direction. Uh, we'll go under the modify to see all these parameters, however, I will just leave these ones in this wind, since it's just like our ambient wind alone. Now we will go to, we'll set up a secondary win that will kind of push the flag up a bit. I set that to instance. That's one thing about don't like about 2013, it seems to set it automatically to instance. If you get that problem, you just right click on your wind up here in your modify box and go make unique. To make sure that it is unique, you'll see it's not bolded anymore. It's very just a plain font right there. So now that since that is uh, unique and its own when, since we will be putting keyframes to it, I will set up its direction. So again, I want its x to be negative 40, its y to be 25, and its z to be negative 20 in the rotation. This will give us a nice upwards draft of our flag, so it kind of fights gravity, kind of gives it an updraft, and pulls our flag up. Now, as we will want to test these out before we will actually start tearing anything, we will go into our forces, enter our M cloth again, go to M cloth forces, and we'll add our scene forces. So you just click add, you click on your scene force that you want to add, and then you do that twice over, one for each of them. And now we will run the simulation, see how that looks. As you can see it's windy, it's kind of blowing the flag, it's kind of flapping in the wind. It looks kind of good actually, it's just flapping in the wind right there. Flap, flap. Alright, so that works well. That sure looks really nice. Now, we will set up our nodes and tears, our tears now, we will set up. So, I want the flag to tear 
kind of right down here, just kind of a jagged line, maybe have a hole here or something, but I really don't want it to tear all the way off and keep flying. I just want it to tear in a fashion that will have one little strand holding onto it. So what we will do is first we will go under, under here, and under our properties we will go to, down to tearing, and we will go allow tearing. This, as you see, if I press play again, has no effect since we have not set up a tear group for it yet. It's just flapping in the wind like regular. So I'll reset it again, go into your vertex mode again, and now start selecting vertices that you want to tear off of. So this is very much up to you where you want your tear and how you want your tear to look. However, since I'm going for kind of an uneven tear at the very beginning and then have a strand at the bottom to hold it together, I'm going to select about this, so this gives us a nice little tear that will look kind of like that. It will tear along these vertices. Then that will be good, and then this part down here will hold together. It will not tear along here, so it won't be able to fall apart, and this little bit will always hold the flag together. So after you've selected your vertices you want to tear along, you hit make tear, and this se separates selected vertices into a highlight group with a weld constant. So you make a tear, and I will rename this tear group. Press OK. And as you can see, the vertexes have welded themselves together nicely to make a tear possible. So we'll go back to mcloth, and we will press play, and we'll see how this looks. Now, as you can see, it's not really tearing. The wind is not powerful enough to pull it apart like we want it to. It can't rip the flag. It's very nice just for flapping the flag, but it won't rip it. It has a nice effect in just the wind movement, but nothing else. So we will stop that, reset our simulation, and we will zoom back out, and I'm going to set up a wind to make it so it can tear fast enough. So we'll go under our wind modifier, make it large, so I can see it, and I will set my rotations to negative 90, 0, and 35. So it's kind of pulling against the regular wind, it's just a huge gust of wind pulling against it. I'll just move that off to the side so I can see them a lot easier. As I said again, the position of these do not matter, it is only the direction of these that matter. Now, I will set this up, but again, if I press play, we don't always want this wind to be blowing, we just want it to be one really big gust really fast, like maybe a second or so, just a big gust of wind that just rips it apart. So for that, we will start doing some keyframe animation. So first, we will go in about to about frame 80, turn on auto key, and set the strength to zero. Now we want to go back here to our first keyframe that it creates automatically. Right click it, click wind 3 strength, and under value set that to zero as well. So now there is no wind from this gust before frame 80 and after, but we'll set that up right now. So we'll go to frame 85 and we will set the strength of this wind to 10. This is a pretty strong wind. As you saw, 1 was giving a nice flapping effect. 10 is a pretty, pretty strong wind that will rip it. I've tested it out before and it works very well. Now let's go to frame 150, and I will copy this keyframe of strength 10 for this wind over to frame 150, and then I'll copy the strength 0 from 80 over to 155. So I'm copying it by just clicking on the node, holding shift, and then dragging it. And as you can see in our modify panel up in the top right here, well middle right, you can see our strength is 0, then at frame 85 it's 10, at frame 150 it's still 10, it's 10 all along there, and then it drops off to 0 again at frame 155. So we will turn off auto key, and let's play, play and see how this works. So you can see it just flapping in the wind, still early on in their animation, but it tears, and it's not really pulling much. And the reason for this is because I have not set this mcloth modifier to have this wind applied to it. This is a very nice thing, you can apply any wind, it's not every wind in the scene that will apply to it, so you can have some really neat effects.